everybody, I'm back again. Um, I thought today we could have a look at what is known as collage fodder. And I know if you've never heard the term before, it is a bit of a strange one. But it's what people make in preparation for using pieces in a collage. And it's great to have a box of all sorts of bits that you can just draw on when you when you're making a collage. So I thought we'd look first at stamping. So I've got some card. It's not the thickest card, but it's not the thinnest either. And I thought we could stamp on I've just taken a piece of A3 and cut it up. There can be any size, any shape. It's just that's kind of what I did. And I've got my stamping uh, foam thing underneath me and I've got my box now in this box has all sorts of things it's where i kind of put straggly stamps that have been left and haven't been put away properly it's all sorts of everything there's a lot of field note stamps in it that's everything every single thing you can think of i don't even know what that is not a clue oh it's a man <laughs> Uh, what's this? A leaf? Yeah, okay. Well, let's stamp some out then and see uh, where we get to. Some of them won't stick. I know they won't because they're really dirty. Some of them will. Hooray. So I've got a couple of colours out. I've got my Versafine um, in Vintage Sepia. I've got my Archival in Carnation Red. My Versafine Claire in Nocturne, which is black. And then this one I found in the ink drawer and it's actually still in its wrapper. I didn't buy it. It's a Mr. F special. I've no idea what it stamps like, so I'm a bit curious to see. I don't know if I'd ever use it in a collage, but it's a nice colour, isn't it? It's called Pool. But I think it's before Archival times even, because it's called Adirondack. So... I don't know, we'll see. It might be dried up and no good for anything. So I'm going to use this and I'll start off with my Versafine. Let's see if we can get it. It doesn't matter if, you, if your stamps don't work out. We're going to cut them out anyway. So don't beat yourself up if they're, if they're not great. So I want it there, but I want to leave enough around it that I can cut it out. Just give that ink time to get down onto your paper. Ooh, that turned out nicely, didn't it? Excellent. So I'm just going to take my towel and just wipe off that excess ink. And I'll put him there because we've done him. Um, next up is this sunflower looking one. I haven't chosen these. It is literally what's in there. So I'll give this one a go. I'll put that there so we've got plenty of room to cut it out. So this is just kind of phase one, if you like, do some stamping. And depending on what stamps you've got, of course, you'll get a completely different set to me. Nice. Um, ah, this one. This is really, really useful. It's a, a sort of frame stamp for a ticket or a label. Label, I should say. So let's move on to the red with this. And be careful when you stamp this because you don't want to get any ink in the centre section. Or at least I don't. I don't like it. Let's give that a try. I'll put it that way. It might fit in better. At this stage, it doesn't matter if it's square on the paper or not. Because... Uh, we're going to cut them out. Perfect. 
oh that's gorgeous and then at a later date you can put something in there if you want to some text a picture whatever uh, I'm going to do that in all my colours I think oh let's try the pool one next wow see how this turns out I'm very curious oh it's nice and bright very nice I don't know when I'd use it but I like it on this well I'll do my I'll do my stamp with it first perfect Versafine is such a good ink Um, no, I'll leave it like that. I don't think I necessarily need a black one. Um, what else do we have? That's just text. Ah, oh, the field label. That's a good label to have. I don't, look at the dirt on the back of that. My goodness me. Oh, glory. Ah, oh, glue sticks are so tight. So that's, we're going to have to glue that onto this, the stamp block. There we go. I'm not sure what that is on there. Might be glue or something, I don't know. Might not stamp properly. Who knows? Right, so let's start with the Versafine then. See if it does want to stamp properly or not, I don't know. May just be too damaged. Sun's just thinking about getting up now. It was uh, a bit of a cloudy morning, but it's right on midday now. No, that's all right. It's come out nicely. I do tend to do quite a lot of botanical stuff, so the field label is great for me. If you don't do things like that or use butterflies or anything, then the field label might not be the way forward for you. Try it in red. This Nocturne's not in its first flush of youth, to be honest, but um, I've got another one. That's perfect. That's a lovely stump in the black. See what else we've got. 
on the done pile. Ooh, I've got these. That's going to need a bit of assistance to stick. move that down a bit there we go uh, I'll do it in black first see what happens oh looks like it's taken the ink really well I have no idea where this stamp came from it's obviously just been on my desk at some stage and got put in the pot of of things that have no home let's try this along here So take your time with it, you know, just let it flow. Whatever stamps you come across, stamp them out, see what you get, move on. It's either good or it's not. <laughs> and it's good. It's so good. I love it. So put that on the done pile. That I don't want to do. It's too much text. That, maybe not. Then we're into the sort of uh, field notes. I love that one. This is one of my favourites. With the stars. I really love it. Let's do it in red. They're perfect. They're absolutely perfect. I love them. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to print them again. I'm going to do them in black. Absolutely great. So let's see what else I can find in my box. Um, all sorts of things, really. Got a leaf here, but that doesn't fit now. Um, a little so no, I don't like it either. I've got that specimen one, that's quite useful. Or I've got a leaf one, let's use the leaf one, it's something different. Whoops. Are you going to stay on there? No, why oh heck. Let's put that away. Stick this down. Now for this one, I'm going to get a different ink out. I'm going to get my Shady Lane, I think it's called. Yeah, Shady Lane. It's a Versafine Claire called Shady Lane, and it's like a dark olive. It's really one of my favourites. I love it. use it quite a lot, actually, because, as I say, I do quite a lot of botanicals. You might not. Isn't that pretty? Let's do another one. And pop it just there. There we are. So that's that page kind of filled up so let's pop that there so let's 
I'll pause you and I'll cut these out and then we'll see what we've got, where we're going to go from there. Let's pause you. Right, OK, I've got those fussy cut out. I'm going to leave them like this in their kind of raw state, as it were, because I don't know what sort of collage I'm going to be putting them in. Uh, this one, the photo strip one, film strip, whatever, I don't know if I'm going to leave it like that or actually cut these spaces out and put something in behind it. But that will come when we're dealing with the collage that we're dealing with. Um, the leaves, of course, you can colour those in, as you can with this daisy flower, sunflower, whatever it is. Um, these can all be inked. Just, you know, wait and see where you're going to put them, and then you've got them ready just to, to draw on as and when. But the other thing that I like to use a lot in um, my collages are sort of words and etc., so we'll have a look at those next. So those, as I say, are just naked. They can go in the box. You can jazz them up when you're done. So I'll put those there. I need to get a box, actually, to put all those things in. Right. So the next thing I'm going to use um, is these inky backgrounds that I've got. They're just hanging around, doing not very much. Oh, there's a stencil. It's a very bright yellow one, which would die cut into beautiful flowers. In fact, I might leave that for that purpose because it would be beautiful. But these ones, they will definitely um, stamp up, I think. I might leave that one as well. As a, mm, I can always do it again. Let's start with the blue one. It's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, and I've got these two sets of their creative expressions clear stamp set designed by Sam Poole that's P-O-O-L-E I don't know if you can get them in the US but I'm sure you can get something similar and they're called CEC 959 CEC 1021 dates from the past and dates from the past part 2 and I love them, they're right up my street um, so I haven't used dates from the past part two, so let's use it first. I love new stumps. So here we are. It's a lot of them. I don't know how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 stamps. It's a lot, isn't it? And they weren't that expensive. Not compared to sort of Timmy. Timmy type, type style stamps. Right, so what am I going to put on there? Will that fit on? It would fit on that way. Let's do that one. So anything, I'm using these because I've got them. But any stamps that you've got will be great. If you've got one like this that's long and you can't get it to go straight, just drop it on your wherever, your surface, and it'll just fall straight and then pick it up. Then you won't have a, a kink in it. So I'm going to do these in black for the main part anyway. This corner down here looks straight. Let's start there. Yeah, that's lovely. That's lovely, yeah. So I'll put that one back in its place. I'm trying to keep these stumps really nice. If I can, if I can possibly do it. You should always take the stamp pad to the stamp. You get better results that way. So 
to just carry on. I don't this looks like someone's signature. Ooh, how nice is that? Let's see what it looks like when it's stamped out. I think that says. Yeah, 1906. It's a while ago. It's before even I was born. I think I've missed a bit there actually. So don't worry about bits like that. We're not committed to anything. Just ink it up again and give it another go. Yeah, that's better. I'd missed the, this bit off here. I don't know why. Obviously hadn't inked it properly or hadn't allowed time for it to migrate. I like having somebody's signature. That's really useful. Um, is that a signature as well? Don't know. No, I think it's a date actually. Actually, that's a date. 6th of July 1906. Don't know why I'm saying it's a signature, it's patently not. <laughs> Where am I going to get this? About there. Move it over a bit. There. <laughs> Catkin's crying to come in. It sounds so lost. And yet, if he came in the window and you opened the back door, he'd go out again. He's, he's quite bananas. Um, I'll get a little one in somewhere, will I? Maybe? Little, little. This is a little one, just says Paris. Sure, I'll get that there. Lovely. Right, so let's cut those out. So I'm just doing a few of each, but you'll get the idea. So I'm going to just cut those out. So at the end of the day, when I, when I cut them out, I actually only got four labels or words or whatever from that set. I cut some not straight and blah, blah, blah. But there they are. I like them and they can go on our pile of collage fodder. <coughs> now I can use a different colour if I wanted to. Um, this one perhaps. I've just been experimenting on the back there so I'm just going to cut this bit out cutting buttons by the look of it there we are that's a really particularly pretty background I think um, in fact it's so pretty I'm tempted to do a stencil on it yeah that's what I'm going to do I'm going to I've got this little rose stencil can't even remember where I got it um, and I think I'll use that I think that would be very pretty so let me just move the stamping board out of the way and get an appropriate color ink which is probably gonna be um, well there's crushed olive shabby shutters but you know what? It's going to be peeled paint. <laughs> There's a surprise. So let's get one of these 
sponges. If you've got a stencil brush, so much the better. I have, but it's got blue on it at the moment, so I'll just use one of these sponges. And let's just set about putting a stencil on here. So if I put it there like that, I can just about get all of it in there. Where's my non-moving mat? Don't know, it's moved itself off somewhere. Don't know where it is. I've got a little, oh, there it is. A little mat that I put under my ink pads that stops them moving around. So there we go. So do this in all directions. like at the end. Hopefully nice. sure that we're exactly right? I think so. I must say I really like the idea of this premiere. I'm filming this part of it on Wednesday around uh, lunchtime and I'll film another part another day and join them together so it all looks seamless. Let's have a look then, see what that's. I've got a bit of a naked bit in the middle. I'm not totally naked, but a little bit naked. Yeah, I like that. It's It's got the sort of... Um, more coverage and less coverage, which I like. You know, if you just want to do that exactly on your page, that's fine, but why not just use a piece of scrapbooking paper, you know what I mean? You want something that looks handmade, so I'm going to cut that off. I'm doing it this way because this is the edge of the The factory edge if you like down there so there's another piece of collage fodder that we've got very very pretty that one so I'll put that in my box whenever I get a box and while I've got that um, peeled paint out I'm just gonna stamp something on here from the creative expressions stamps because I like them let's get my stamp board back out Which we have this time. Um, oh, it's difficult. They're all so nice. Well, I, I particularly like this one that's a little label. That, that's lovely. So let's do that. And I don't often stamp with Distress Ink. Uh, and I have got my Shady Lane in the Versafine that I could use. But I do really like peeled paint so we'll see if it works it should do there's no reason why it shouldn't you just don't get a crisp stamp 
Oh, but look at that, it's lovely. So I'm just going to carry on with these because I really like them. And it will fit in with my collages. Definitely will. Because generally there's some green somewhere in my collages. That's quite a sharp image actually. I wouldn't have thought you'd get it that sharp with Distress Ink. But yeah, I mean it's lovely. So the question now is do I want to put something in the centre of those or not? I have got things that would go in the centre. have a look and see what we've got. Um, well Paris definitely would so let's do that. So I'm trusting my distress ink again see if it wants to work for me. Oh I don't think that's square I'm not altogether fussed. Yeah that's all right. Um doesn't have to be square. Oh, that's the wrong side. I must do that a million times, put my stamps back up on the wrong piece of paper. What else have I got that would fit in? That one would. This is so you can go to your box once you get one sorted out and you can pull from it bits that you might need. Oh, that, that's not going to fit in there. So I'll just put that back there. I think this one will though. Let's just check it out. Yep. Not sure I know which way is up on this one. <laughs> That's the story of my life, to be honest. We've got little house martins building a, a nest. Um, our bedroom's got two windows and uh, different family of house martins are building nests in each window and it's driving Katkin absolutely wild I mean, it really is because um, he can see them perfectly well but he can't get to them which is a joy um, I'm going to put another Paris one because that might just annoy me that it's not square um, so yeah he's, he's spends a lot of his day upstairs trying to catch these birds that of course he never can because they're through the window and of course we can't open the window now in our bedroom because I wouldn't trust him not to go out he would get so carried away with catching the birds that I don't think he'd realise how high up he is I might be doing him a disservice, he might be a bit smarter than that, but I don't think so. Uh, so, he can, all he can do is sit there and fume that he can't get to them. And he actually stays there so long, he finally just goes off to sleep. <laughs> right, so that's, that's that set that we've got in this set. That will fit. Well, I've got that one, number 261. So 
So just be careful when you glue these that are made with the Distress ink that you don't get them wet because if you do, um, th they'll move because Distress ink will always move no matter how long it's been down if you apply water to it. Right, so there we go. That's our stamps, our creative studio stamps. Um, I'm looking for the lid. There's the lid. And I'll pop that away. And I'm just going to cut round these and we'll have these little ones as well. Right, so at the end of that we ended up with five really nice labels. Very usable for me because I love that colour. So let's just put them in the imaginary box. <laughs> <coughs> and let's go back to stenciling so I've got some stencils I've got this one it looks like a Timmy one to me but it's big it's bigger than most Tim I don't know uh, this one that's an all and create one uh, the rose one we've already used so we'll steer clear of that and I've also got these which are Prima stencils. They're 12 by 12, so I imagine they've probably been made for furniture, but I haven't used them. I got them second hand. Um, of course I did. But um, I'd quite like to have a look at them and see, see what they are. So, oh, there's three in here. Okay, so there's this one that's nice isn't it like clamshells I like that it's a nice background um, this one bubbles I would say and then this one that's got a more nautical theme I would never do anything with a nautical theme if, you know through choice put it that way so I'll keep the other two out and see what we can do with those these are there. I'm sure these weren't cheap for the original person that bought them. Prima stuff isn't cheap, is it? It's good though. It's good. Right, so I need a piece of paper then. So I'm going to go back to my backgrounds. Here's this one, this inky background that we did. Um, I'm going to use the alphabet, I think. Right there, I better put my stump thing away, otherwise I'll get it covered in. Covered in stuff. So let's use that. I like numbers. Okay, so what colour am I going to use? Quite fancy using black actually. Have I got any black? Black suit, where are you? I did have these organised and ordered and now they're not hickory smoke free black suit there we go lovely so I'm just going to get myself a sponge I don't know what colour's originally been on this, but it doesn't much matter. The black will prevail. So if you don't want this to be regular, that you know, that's fine, don't do it all over. I'll do it and I'll have a look at it and see what I think. Oh, I quite like that actually. That's nice. 
It's actually standing out more in real life than it is on the camera, but I like that. Yep. Yes, I do. So let's just chop that off. That's another bit of collage fodder we've got. Yeah, it's nice, Make, be good in the background. So what else have we got then to play with? We've got these circles. They're potentially very nice. Let's do a bit of them. Try and get it square on the top. Once again, as I say, it doesn't have to be complete coverage. Sometimes it looks nicer if it's not. All the same intensity of ink either, for that matter. A bit here, a bit there. Let's have a look. That's nice. That's nice. So let's cut that off. All of these bits can be torn up, used as is, or torn up for your journal, via collage. That's nice. We might possibly be straying more into the realms of. <coughs> um, art journals but that's okay so which is the right way of this one this way i think so i'm just going to place that over it somewhere i'm going to do it in black again because i like that uh, effect that you get you could do it in red possibly would work but i'm just going to use carry on with my black So if you're more of a mind that you want a, a complete coverage, that's fine. I understand that. Um, personally, I really like that. Another piece completed. Goodness, I'm rattling through these. So what else have I got in the background department? I've got this blue. So I could easily do something on that. Shall I use the big Prima bubble one? Let's give it a go. Um, what colour shall I use? I think I'll use brown. Let's put those two sponges away. I think this one might be a, a brown, might be purple, I don't know. And I'm going to use gathered twigs because it's really quite a dark, dark brown. Should play nice with the blue. Looks like it's going to be quite nice. Just want to go about halfway along with this. Something like halfway. Yeah, I'm not so keen on that one, to be honest. 
but you never know when you might need a few dots or spots so I'll keep it in the box but it's not going to be the one I reach for first by the time I've got it inked up and stuff it might be all right but I'm not not overly keen um, then I'm going to try that all and create crackle one see what we get with that don't believe I've ever used this it's time to get out all the things that you don't ordinarily use I think that fits on there perfectly so I'll go in with the brown again little bits without I'm not cover, covering the whole thing with ink I'll see what it looks like I might need to go back and cover it all I don't know I have no idea oh no that's nice yeah you see I like that one I think you know if that was torn up and slipped into a collage that would look great. Like it. Success. But do not like this one. Don't like it. So, what have we got? We've got these two. We've got... Oh, there goes my labels. Let's just pick them up. Otherwise, they'll be lost forever. Uh, these two. That one. Love that. Might be my favourite. And then this one with the roses on. So yeah, I've done all right. Just a quick, quick little color um, stenciling session. Got some nice stuff there. Nice. There we go. Right. So that's going in the imaginary box. <coughs> Excuse me. Now then. Okay. So here I have some fabric. It's quite thin. Um cotton and it's a kind of oatmeal-y colour creamy oatmeal -y colour which I like a lot and I've got some 49 and market rub-ons and I'm going to try something never tried it before uh, but I have seen it done with the taperology stickers and so I can't believe that this won't work but we'll see <laughs> so in this pack you get six sheets I believe let's get them out and have a look Forty nine and market just do beautiful rub ons are gorgeous. And it's just a piece of card. So yeah, we've got reds, we've got brownie oranges, brownie yellows, green, oh lovely, a kind of ocean colour and a blue. So which we start with? Well, let's put them back in their order and we'll do them in the order they come. Well, I'm going to try it first, obviously, see if it works. So I probably need to rip my fabric. Um, it's just a bit too big where it is. So about there. So let's rip that. It does rip really easily, this fabric. You might not be so lucky. Um, and... Maybe half. Let's do it in half. If it works, we can get bigger and braver. There we go. There we are. Just get those loose strings off. Right, so how much of this do I need then? And which bit do I need? Well, I might as well do that. So cut it there. And you cut them all in one piece. Is that gonna 
fit on yet, okay? And cut along there. So, this is very brave of me. Or oh, foolish. So yeah, that's going to fit on there really, really nicely. So all you do is you take the backing off. It's got a sort of white backing. You take that off and there's your rub on adhered to this um, see-through paper. So we'll put that on there like that. They furnish you with a little stick to rub it on with. So let's try. See if we can get it to adhere to the fabric. I think it's going. Pretty sure it's going, in fact. You can kind of see it when it goes. Yeah, that's starting to go, go on, go on. Just be patient with it. Kind of doesn't take this long on paper, but I'm just being super careful that I've got it all stuck. Right, let's see if that wants to lift up. So if you if you lift it up and see if it's transferred, which it has. If you come across a bit that hasn't transferred, I think there might be a bit here, it feels sticky. Just rub it off as you go. No, that hasn't. There we go. Just keep lifting it off like that. Now this top row I haven't been diligent enough with. just as you go just keep rubbing to make sure you've got it down on there there we go oh isn't that fabulous yeah it feels really smooth it feels like it's on there there's nothing there to pick off oh isn't that gorgeous it's gorgeous I love it that would be so nice in a collage. That's our star piece of the day. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. F. Did you think it was going to work, Mr. F? Every confidence. <laughs> Every confidence. So we're moving on now to the brownie orangey colour. Flushed with success. Um, that won't fit in. I think it's going to be this top part down here. These are just the most amazing things. If you don't buy anything else from 49 and Market, you do need to get these. They're amazing. So that will fit on there really nicely okay so once again you just take the carrier sheet off put it down and then rub I obviously didn't rub enough in the first instance with the last one so I'll just make sure I give it a good rub a dub dub rub a dub dub three men in a tub <laughs> I don't know what three men were doing in a tub, I've no idea. Don't even think about it, you don't want to go there. <coughs> Moving on to the bottom. Like I say, just... You know, if you do go ahead and get these rub ones, and I, I recommend them, they have my full recommendation, then just be patient when you're putting them on. That's all I would say. 
they're not that cheap to be honest but then they're, they're not as expensive as you'd think well I'm pretty sure 49 and market is available in the States because it's a US company Let's have a look then and see what we've got. Somebody's decided to use a chainsaw outside. Not exactly sure what they're doing, but it's a good day for it, whatever the chainsaw in up. love them I love them they're just the right size as well aren't they leave those there um, I'll do one more I'll do, I'll do some more but I'll do them off camera because I don't want you to get bored so I've got the oceany colour oh we're definitely going to do green definitely um, might even do two green who knows so about the same size is quite nice, I think. So oh, that went a bit a bit wonky. There we go. And just about in half will be fine. Pull the threads off. That's great. There's a nice thread there. Right, that's lovely. So I've got two pieces here. Oh, they're just all so gorgeous. What can I get on this one? I can get to there. And just to there, I think. I'll give it a try for size when I've got it chopped out. Don't take them all off the backing or anything at once because you'll you'll ruin them. So does that fit on there? Oh, like a glove. There we go. Oh, I'm so delighted with these. Can't wait to make a collage and use them. So I'm just going a bit faster, see if that works. I don't know. I don't know if it will or not. They kind of change colour when they're stuck down. But not massively. I want all these dots and everything in as well. Because they look really nice. Let's give that a try, see where we're at. So I'm just going to lift it from this side. Keep pressing down as I go.
just these thin little bits. <coughs> I don't want to stick. I just realised I'm doing this on a stamping board. Might be easier to do it on the glass. Medium up. There we go. Oh, look at that. These are scrumptious. Scrumptiously gorgeous. They would make any colour, surely. So I've got red, I've got orange, I've got green. Um, ooh, what shall I use? These yellow ones and yellow brownie ones are quite nice, aren't they? Might be a bit similar to that one or not. I'll use this side here. I'm going to cut it there. See what happens. Might have to rip my uh, fabric again. Yeah, it's going to be just a little bit too long. I want to trim it about there. See if I can rip that. Oh yeah, no problem. It's quite soft this fabric. It's perfect for what we want. There we go, pop it down. Oh yeah, I was gonna move it from the medium up, wasn't it? See if that makes makes any difference. I don't know if it's coming off or not, if I'm honest with you. I don't really think so. I think it's actually better on the rubber mat. A uh, sponge mat. Right, let's have a look at that now then. See what it's like. Just pick that corner up. No, nope, let's try this corner, that's better. Yeah, it's coming off, it's coming off. Perfect. There we go. Oh, I love these. I love them. They're glorious. So, so nice. I'd even do some more of those actually and put them in my my box. <coughs> love them. Huge success, I would say. So let's just pop these away. Look after these when you've got them out of the, the um, 
bad that they're coming because if you separate the back of the release paper from the transfer paper they don't do too well they split up <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsie, whoopsie. Oh, I hate these cellophane bags with a funny sticky bit on them. Drive me mad. Demented. There we go. So that's them. So we've tried stencils. We've tried that. So I still have my fabric that we put the rub-ons on. And I've decided that I'm going to stamp on the fabric because I like that look. It's nice. So I've got my really mucky uh, field note stamps out that are in my box. So I'm going to have to glue them all on because they really need a trip to the sink. I mean, look at that. It's horrible. Anyway, let's give it a go. So I'm using this one that says specimen because I, I like it. Ooh, I'm going to have to get right over here. Give it plenty of time because you need the ink to soak into the fabric. Look at that. It's lovely. I really like it. Not convinced it's absolutely square, but I think we'll be all right. Um, what else? Yeah, the butterfly one, that's a good one as well. For what I'm doing anyway. Let's pop that there. So it's a fabric on a collage, can look really nice, especially when you've got this sort of frayed edge on it, I think looks very attractive. Very attractive. As the dicky bird goes that way. I hope I've inked that properly. Hard to tell sometimes. Oh yes, these are coming out really nicely actually, really nicely. So what else have I got in my, in my box of goodness? Oh, there's that um, collect one, I quite like it. That'd be nice on there, I think. Anything else, anything else? No, not really. There should be a circle one somewhere, where's that? Where's that gone? Well, there's that one, but I'm sure there's a bigger one. I'm sure I just saw it before. What's going on? Um, just that one. That's, I don't know what that is. It might be a clock. It's potentially a clock. Let's see if I can see that big circle one. Oh, there's that one with a flower on. That's nice. There it is, hiding from me. So I want those ones out. Let's do this big circle first. These are printing so nicely. Maybe they like being dirty. Who knows? Ah, run out of glue. Run out of glue.
I hope I can tear these out properly. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. Lovely. This one, I'm not actually sure what this one is. Let's put a bit on the back of that while I'm here. <clears throat> Certainly I must say this Versafine seems to be working really, really well. That might be a bit tight down there. So I'm going to move to over here. Oh, I've got a lot of ink on that stump block. Oh, that's nice though. Wow, I think we got away with that. We did well. That could have just ruined everything. And this flower I'm going to use as well. And I think that'll give us enough, you know, at least enough to get started with. Because you can have another day later on where you make more fodder. <laughs> it's upside down, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to tear it out anyway. There we go. Right. So I think that's sufficient, as I say. So let's just see where we need to tear this. Oh my goodness. I haven't made life easy for myself exactly. Let's tear it there. Down to about there. And this one. About here. Yeah, this would have been a darn sight easier if I thought about this in the first place. But I didn't. There we go. Let's take the loose threads off. There we are. Doesn't that look nice? That's a nice addition to a um, collage. Lovely, lovely jubbly, really nice. Just a bit of texture, isn't it? The, the edges give a little bit of texture. Let's see if I can get this to tear in between these ones. Oh, just about. I wouldn't say it was perfect, but near enough. I mean, you could always stick that under something if you really wanted to, but it's okay. It's all right. They're both nice. What have we got left? Got this collect one. Oh, yikes, that's a bit close. I don't know if I'm going to be able to salvage this one, actually. might just get away with that. Yeah, take it from me. Stamp in a bit of a grid so you can easily tear it. We could tear it first, I suppose. Looks nice. And... One more, two more. So this one we probably want to tear about there. And about there. And then we need to take a bit off this edge. nice isn't it? 
come out really clear which is good okay so this we want to tear about there yep it's lovely and then A little bit off the bottom if I can sometimes you have to cut it you just oh no I can tear it there we go lovely that's great. So that's our fabric that we've got left. That's going to tear up there and just straighten that off. There we go. And now we've got all sorts of threads left. And I recommend that you keep them because they can look really nice behind focal points and stuff. So take all the, the threads off that you can. And we'll um, do double duty with them. There we go. loads of threads on this one there we are so I just got some little bits and I'm, I'm to be honest I'm just going to chuck them out but save these these will come in useful so we'll put that in our collage box right so the next thing I want to do is a bit of stitching oh got some nice threads here put them in with the other ones um, yeah, so I'll just pause you there while I get my sewing machine up and sorted out. So as you can see, I've got my sewing machine out and I've got red threaded in it. So I'm just going to go with the red for a, a minute. This is the fabric we had left from the stamping. And I'm going to just cut that kind of in half. Tear it. And I haven't had this sewing machine that long. <clears throat> I probably have had it a while actually but it doesn't feel that long so I don't I'm not that familiar with it really so I'm just going to fold the end over just like that just fold it over so I'm sewing on double thickness it's a bit better I think because this is very soft this fabric and I'm just going to try one of these stitches out that I've never tried before and see what happens end of that one. Ooh, it's quite nice. Quite jazzy. Look at that. It's okay, isn't it? So probably I want to pull the threads through to the wrong side. I'm just going to get a pin <clears throat> to facilitate in that. There we go. And this two. You can use any stitch you like, straight stitch, anything, whatever your sewing machine does and you haven't tried before, I, I say try it. Come on. I can't get that one through. Don't even know that it's there. Oh well, we tried. 
and at some stage you'll knock that off so it doesn't come undone so that's that let's just tear that off just where it's folded over there put that on my pile of threads so yeah I like that that's nice that'll be nice in a collage um, let's do the same thing again let's just fold it over uh, let's select a different stitch I've got some leaf type looking thing just stitch number 44 on mine give it a go what do you know probably went one stitch too far with this one but it doesn't matter it looks nice nice leafy looking thing that'll be nice in my collages lovely I like that there we go so something else for the pile and then I'm just gonna go back to the more traditional straight stitches and zigzags etc so just going to keep folding bits over i'll be left with nothing in a minute because this keeps shedding um and i'm going to go to number one no number one number two number three Number four. No, I don't know what number five is. Might be a stretch stitch. Give it a go. We'll just give it a go and see what happens. So I'm folding a narrower piece in because it's just a straight stitch. Yeah, it is a stretch stitch. So it's a sort of double stitch, if you like. So it looks, you can see it more easily than just a straight stitch. So yep, yeah, like that, that's grand. Lovely. That'll be nice in my collage. Um, and then I'm <laughs> getting less and less every time. Uh, I'm just going to fold that over like that, the bit that I've got left, and I'm going to do a stretch zigzag on it. So we've just got this zigzag going up there. Now what I would do if I wasn't doing a video is I would do the same things over and over but in different coloured threads. Or you can leave it to see what your project is and then do your stitches in different colours. Um, I, I like to have them done in preparation then I can just go in my box and get them out because if I don't um, I very often don't feel like getting the sewing machine out blah blah so you know haven't got any so yeah that's what I would do I'd probably go black brown maybe a blue but very probably a green so that's the sewing segment over 
Okay, that's the machine away. And there's just one thing really that I want to show you um, because I think you might find it useful in your collages, obviously. I'm not trying to waste your time. So I've got what I think you call packing tape instead. It's sort of tape, just a clear sticky tape. And I'm going to take a length of it that will fit on my board. Doesn't want to cut. Okay, just cut. No, it doesn't want to cut, so that's useful, isn't it? So I'm just going to put them down. And it's a good idea to do as many as you can in one time because it's a bit of a messy procedure. Guess it doesn't have to be, I'm just messy. <laughs> so I'm going to do four pieces. And when you come to put this in your collage or in your journal or whatever, you probably will have to glue it on. Um, it, it sort of loses its stickability. But that's no tragedy. We can do that. So that's that there. Right. So I've got three alcohol inks. They come in a set, actually, from Tim Holtz. Um, caramel, ginger and latte. And they're all these shades of, of brownie colour, which I like because, you know, when we're talking about aged, vintage, older packing tape, I don't know when packing tape first came to be, but... Um, stuck into old books it does go that crusty kind of browny colour so I'm going to start with latte I think it's the lightest and just put a bit down on top of the tape and I've got a little finger dauber here just to spread that out and it, it is very light this one but I do quite like the effect of it I'm just momentarily going to leave the top of that and I'm going into um, caramel, which I think might be the darkest. Just put little bits of that along, around and about. Get your dauber, just spread it out. Some little bits of texture, but generally it doesn't have a lot of texture in it. It's fairly smooth. So... There we are, that's that. I'm pleased with that, that's fine. Don't need to do any more to that. So then I'm going to get the lid off this one as well. So that's a nice light colour and probably more in keeping with what you actually would see. So a little bit more of this caramel, a little bit more of the latte. Oh, the other way around, this is the caramel. A tiny bit of ginger here and there. Get your dauber at work. Spread that out over your tape. I want it to be lighter than this, is what I'm aiming for. Because I like that, but it is very dark. So there we are, that's fine. And then just to carry on with those. You could do this, I guess, in any alcohol colours that you wanted. Do blues or purples or anything if it takes your fancy. But it's really quick and easy to do and so effective, I think. There we go. And one last one. this ginger. I'll just spice it up. Just using the dauber really just to mix the colours. There we go. Happy with that. So that's how you make full aged, it looks green because the board's green but it isn't. It's lovely 
full aged sellotape, packing tape. So let me get my lids back on these so I don't want them to dry out. <coughs> and as I say, fortunately, these three inks come together as a pack. So if you're not into alcohol ink and you don't want to buy any more than you need, just buy that pack and you're good to go. So there we have it. That's that. Right. OK, so we, we've done a lot of stuff today. We've covered a lot of ground. And although I haven't given you that many examples of each thing, you know, if you go away and get your stencils out, get your stamps out, get your sewing machine if you have one out, there, there's lots of things here, loads of ideas that you can expand on for your collages. It's stamped on fabric, we sewed on fabric, stamped on fabric, put rub-ons on fabric. We stenciled on inky backgrounds, which are very nice. I like those a lot. Um, we stenciled that, another thing, stenciled on another inky background. Um, and that and that. We stamped and cut them out. We, we've got loads of stamps here. Some on inky backgrounds, some just on cream card. But we have got a lot. I mean, they are, they would just be so perfect in the right place, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got lots. Lots to play with. So I hope that you've learned something from that. I'm going to finish this video here, although I will be back in the blink of an eye to do my this week's collage. So keep watching. Hi, everybody. Oh. I was going to say hi everybody, I'm back, but actually this is a continuation, <laughs> so I'm doing it on a different day, but we're all going to be watching it in the same sitting, so yeah, I am back. <laughs> so we're on to now collage week two, and uh, here are our prompts. So I'll leave that there if you want to copy them down or you want to take a screenshot. Uh, I'll just go through them. A photograph. It can be anything. It can be one of your photos. It can be a Timmy photo. It could be something out of a magazine, out of a newspaper. Um, whatever kind of photo you can get your hands on or you feel like working with. Uh, number two is lace. So that could be if you have a die cut, that a die that cuts out lacy panels, that could be what you use. Or it could be edging lace it could be anything a piece of lace uh, numbers well they could be stamped on I mean earlier I showed you how to use a stencil um, on this inky background that's numbers if you wanted to incorporate that that would be fine uh, brown paper packaging now I'm using this bag that I got from Boots the Chemist when I went to pick my prescription up. Uh, Amazon, however, do... So if, you've, if you've been the recipient of a large Amazon box, you will know that you get masses of brown paper in it. And I can never bring myself... <laughs> yeah, here's a cigarette. This is what arrived in our last box. I mean, there's absolutely yards of this stuff. <coughs> Thank you. Way he's destroying everything as he goes. Um, I can never bring myself to throw it out. It always looks like it's going to be so useful for something, um, but seldom is, I find. But anyway, I, I keep it all. You can, if you want to, iron it first if that makes you feel better. But um, brown paper packaging. And the last thing is coffee dyed paper. I've put coffee dyed, it could be tea dyed. It could, for the purposes of this, be uh, one of your eco dyed ones, you know, um, using avocado pits or whatever. Uh, just dyed paper. So there we have it. Photo, lace, numbers, brown paper packaging and coffee dyed paper. Those are our five prompts for today. You can add anything else to it that you, that you want to, anything at all. Um, but those are the five that must be included. So let's move along the bus. So here's my um, 
the background that I put up on my coffee site for those of you that don't feel like making a complete collage. Um, I will put some more up actually because some of you have said that you really like them, you find them helpful as a base to build on. So this background, it's got pink florals in it, so I kind of wanted to pick up on that really. Um, I mean it's a great start having this down, you know, you're not having to build up the whole background thing, whatever. Um, but this is kind of dictating to me that it wants to be pinky. This is pink, has a pink hue as well, and maybe florally. So let's see. So I got a photograph. It's one of Tim Holtz snapshots, trimmed the edges down, inked them quite heavily, and just tore it down there. It just looked a bit, a bit perfect as it was, but you don't have to do that at all. Um, I'm just wondering whether I want to tear it some more. I don't know. Anyway, that's my kind of centerpiece, if you like, my focal point. Um, and then, then what? Yes, I've got some of Keong's beautiful coffee stain paper. I know not all of you will have this. I'm just fortunate enough to have it. And I thought I would pop that up there. Maybe like that. And I want to introduce some pink. These um, these are out of, I believe they're out of Tim Holtz, the latest ephemera pack that he did. And this says, I've got a deck chair number nine on the prom deck. <laughs> Wouldn't that be lovely? So I'm going to pop that under there, under, under both the coffee stain paper and the photo. But... If I put it there, I've got this little bit of this sticking out and I don't like that. So I'm just going to move it along so it covers the edge of that. And I don't want it straight there. That just looks weird to me. It's just too straight. So I'm just going to move that out. Just step it out a little bit. You see that's just over that edge. So that's fine. I'm happy with that. Then just to balance this, I'm going to bring in some pink to the top. This one's gone under that coffee stain, so I'm going to make this one go over it. Um, and once again, I don't want that stopping exactly where that stops. I don't like it when it does that. So I'm going to put that there. So this and this aren't in line at the edge of the photograph, and this pink bit aren't in line either. That, that suits me. And this um, bit in the background that says cut postal, it, I'm not in line with it anywhere either. So I'm trying to offset things. Now, here I've got that nice sort of pinky bit and this. So I, I kind of think I don't really need to add any more because the background's doing a lot of the heavy lifting for me. So what now? Well, I need lace. So I've got a whole wadge of cream lace. This. There's loads of it. I'm not really sure where I got it. I think I might have got it off eBay, where you can buy this stuff by the yard. Um, and it's 60 inches wide. It's dead cheap. So I'm, I'm thinking I'll just put that there, out of the way, so I can still see my four ladies. There. And this piece possibly down there. So we're balancing. As we go, we're balancing things up. You can still see that pink very clearly through there. That just softens the edge of this piece. Yep. And then I cleverly, or so I think cleverly, used my brown packaging paper to cut out and make some flowers. And I'll show you the die I used. Uh, this one, it's a Tim Holtz Sizzix, and it is number 661806. And you get dies to make three different flower types. I chose this one simply because I've never done it before. I don't know why, but I hadn't. So I've, I've made them, I've inked them around the edges and held them together in the center with a brad. I did fluff them all up, but 
have kind of gone. If you've got something like this that won't stand up for you, um, you can always spray it with hairspray. That kind of works. So let's let's just try that. So I'm thinking I'll put that there. Stands out nicely. And I've got another smaller one that I can just tuck up into that one. Like that. Yep. Then I've got this one. This needs fluffing up a bit. I'm just going to put that there. Like that. Right, I like that. I like that. And I cut out a load of leaves as well and I've inked them up. So I want one there that's coming over the edge of that photo just to um, embed the flowers into it a bit. So I'm going to put two leaves there, like so. And two leaves probably down the other side. don't know if I can have that up over that photo or if it's going to look a bit odd. Let's try it and see without moving everything else. Oh, we're getting to the stage now where everything wants to move. I want that pushed in a little bit. Like that. I probably need a leaf or something down there, but I'll come back to that. And then this one... I think I'll just, I'll put them at the back. Going away, like so. Whoops. Move the first one. Kind of like that, I think. I quite like that. Um, and it leaves the photograph quite clear. So, I don't know... I've got more. I, mean, I cut out quite a lot of the leaves, actually. Let's just try a couple in there, see what we think. Oy. Yeah, I, I like that, I think. I think I like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Now, so we've got photograph, lace, numbers, brown paper packaging and coffee dyed paper. So the numbers, I've cut out uh, using one of my alphabet dies. Uh, the numbers 2, 3 and 4. And I wanted them quite pink. I didn't have any pink card. So I just uh, inked up a little piece of card and then cut them out and now I've inked around them with, with the brown just to bring it all together. So I'm thinking, um, I want one on the, on the photograph and I want four because there's four ladies there. Having said that, that's a chap in the background. Sorry, chappy, I um, haven't looked properly. So yeah, there's four people there then in that case. Um, and then I just, because the flowers are creating a diagonal this way, I'd quite like a diagonal that way. So I'm going to put that there. And this one. Down here, I think. Yeah. I think that looks quite nice. Quite pleased with it. So let's proceed in. Sticking everything down. What's at the very back? It's going to be a nightmare to stick down. I'm going to remove things because I can't see where I'm going really. So this is the first one. Let's ink around it and get it st oops, stuck down. a bit more ink in the corners yep 
you use glue stick if you're happier using glue stick just some of these elements are card and I think I had that about there is it square? last time I stuck something on that wasn't square next one is the coffee stained If you like Keung's uh, coffee stain paper, she has a shop on Etsy called Wonders by Wink. Wonders by Wink, all, all one word, all together. And you will see what nice things she's got in her shop to entice you. I love her coffee stained paper, it's fabulous. So I just want that fairly straight, bearing in mind it's been torn. So yeah, I think that's all right. Let's just get rid of those a minute. So that goes there. So this one, just short of where that photograph ends. And it's a good thing to keep in mind that you don't want everything overlapping line to the same line or anything. So I have to bear in mind that I've got things on my printed background that you know perhaps some of you are doing from from the start and putting all your pieces on is what I mean to say not printing the background out you're just putting everything on and we will definitely work up to doing that ourselves but I think you know for the people who Loads of you that say, I can't do collage, I've tried loads of times, it work, you know, it's always rubbish. Um, I think the background's maybe a good way to start. There we go. So that's going to go there, like that. And square. I think that's square. And then our photo goes on about there. So this is actually a very easy collage because we've got the background. If we'd had to build the background as well, it would have been a bit more complicated getting everything where we want it. But building off the background, this is actually quite easy. we've got the lace I'll just remove my flowers from it so that's going to go there and I want to retain as much of that photograph as I can so I'm just going to dab some glue down stick my lace on like so and then the same with this bottom corner I'm going to have to move all my flowers off it just going to get a towel if I've got one yet Stop that down. Okay, now the next thing that I want to add that I didn't mention to you was we kept some of these uh, strings from when we were printing and stuff on the fabric. So I just want to use a couple of those. They add a nice background. I'm 
just going to try and stick those just in the middle if I can. Flowers will come along and stick them down better, but for the moment, that's that. This needs quite a lot. It's quite a big lot of flowers going in there. So I'm going to take a fair bit of my strings. I told you to save them. There we go, we've still got some left, not very many, but some. So there we are, so I want it kind of coming out. When we stick the flowers on, it'll stick it in place properly. Okay, right, so the flowers. Let's stick the big one on first. You can see I held mine together with a brad. So I'm going to make sure it's got plenty glue on it. That there. Press it down. And this one. So I kind of want to nest this up to this one a little bit like that. Lovely. Once they've stuck down, I can go back in and fluff them up a bit. Because I'm pressing them fairly flat now. Okay, so now the leaves. So I inked around these as well. Just give them that vintage sort of shabby look. It's very thin, this packing paper that I'm using. But it doesn't have to be any thicker than it is, you know? And I had two leaves at the other side as well, I think. I mean, you don't have to put flowers on at all. Flowers are not part of the the prompts this this week so you certainly don't have to do it but you know me and flowers I kind of like them this does not want to stick down stick down might just put that at a bit of an angle here. Oh, I think it needs a third one now. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Let's give everything time to grip. Lovely. So we can move on to the flower at the top of the page. And just the leaves. And I think we just had two coming away from the top. Ooh, tense stuff. There we go. Oops, I think that needs to come across a bit. Right, so now it's just the numbers and we're done. I mean, really quite a straightforward 
quite a straightforward collage. So as usual, you're more than welcome to copy my collage. Um, I'm, I'm sure you'll find as you go along that there are things you, you'll you just change. You'll just feel you need to change. And, and that's fine. And it's equally fine if you don't. If you end up with something that looks very similar to mine, that's fine. Just think about each piece as you're putting it down and why you're putting it there. Now these numbers I'm putting where I am because it's going to give me another diagonal. Nope, oh, someone at the door. So even this number, when I've put it down, I don't want it along that black line. I've just offset it slightly from that line. You're trying desperately hard not to create straight lines here. There we go. So this is our last piece, I think. There we go. So that's it. I mean, it's really straightforward. It's a very straightforward collage. Um, I'm just wondering, did I have leaves down here? That's a good question, that is. I can't remember. I cannot remember if I did or I didn't. Let's put them there and see what we think. No, I think it's a bit heavy with those in there. So I'll just remove those. Right, so that's that's our collage for the week. Um, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it because it's very small, really. But, you know, as I'm saying to you again, if you haven't printed out the backgrounds, then you will have to make yourself a background. It doesn't have to be a square or rectangular. It can be any shape. Uh, as can the size. A few of you have asked me what size they have to make the collage. You d there is no specific size or shape. You could make it round, triangular, hexagonal, anything that you like, uh, and any size that you feel comfortable working in. I'm just providing these backgrounds in this size. I think they're in A5 and they're also in half letter size for the US. So, and they're both available on my Kofi site. If you want to pop over there, they're free. Um, download them and then you'll have a start if you're not feeling um, that you're really um, co comfortable with collage. Uh, it'll give you a start. So there we are. That's my collage for this week. I'll just put the prompts back up so you can see what we used. We had a photo lace, numbers, brown paper packaging and coffee dyed paper. So it's it's all there. It's in a neat little collage um, that actually I really like. I like the numbers. They lead your eye this way through the photograph um, and the flowers, of course, have really pretty much taken over as the focal point, but they're spread out and they're balanced. So that's what you can. These are the things that you kind of have to think of. You you want to lead your eye through the collage. So in this case, the numbers are doing that rather well. And you want it to be balanced. You know, don't put all your things down in the bottom left or bottom right or any of the corners. Spread it out a little bit, and yeah, you you'll get there in the end. We'll keep doing it, and everybody will eventually get there. So this really is it. Thanks everybody for joining me on the on what I put out as a premiere. I uh, hope some of you are still with me. And I will see you again through the week. 
uh, as we continue with the little golden book, Bob Ross. So, thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.